While developing applications, a lot of people nowadays talk about web accessibility. But really often developers don't care to implement it at all, because they think that it is difficult or the company set them to skip it. But actually it is not that difficult and important even for users without any problems. This is why by the end of this video you will learn how to solve all these problems and implement accessibility correctly. And the sponsor of this video is Verpex. Verpex offers a full range of hosting services from reseller and VPS hosting to shared hosting, dedicated servers and domain registration. Whenever you are running your personal website, an online business or even your own hosting company, Verpex has options for you. If you want to start your own hosting business or manage multiple websites easily, reseller hosting includes cPanel, automated daily backups and 24-7 support. You can set your own pricing, create hosting plans and let Verpex handle the infrastructure. If you need more performance than VPS hosting, gives you dedicated resources and data centers worldwide. If you need even more power, dedicated servers provide full hardware access with no resource sharing. So if you are looking for scalable and affordable hosting, check out Verpex. You can find the link in the description box below. With that being said, let's jump into the video. So most often companies don't want to spend any time on accessibility because they think that 90% of their users don't have any problems with for example eyesight and they don't bother to implement it for the small percentage of people. But it is extremely important to think about it because by improving accessibility you can improve your website for all your users. How can we do that? First step starts with correct UI UX. Your website must be obvious. And it will help all your users tremendously. What I mean by obvious? Let's have a look on my website as an example. When you are going to the website on the homepage, you see links on the top and you see some information here. Obviously you understand when you click on courses, you probably see the list of the courses. And by selecting a specific course, you are jumping inside this course. Your website must be obvious and it must be easy to navigate your website. It should not be confusing for users. If you have some weird pop-ups or people can't even find content because of a lot of links or ads, it is not a great experience. If we are talking about text on your website, you need to have proper headings like h1 for the title of your post for example, and then h2, h3 and h4 for sections. It will by default make your content easier to read and additionally by that you also improve accessibility for people with screen readers. Another extremely important moment is colors and this is again UI UX. Your website colors must be easy to read. Typically you want contrast colors like black and white so you can easily read the text. But it is important to not make it too contrast. When you are taking plain white and plain black, it is too harsh for your eyes and it is eye straining even if you don't have any vision problems. This is why it is recommended to make your colors less harsh, like for example grayish background with black color works just fine. And inside Chrome DevTools there is an amazing tool. You can click on specific element, here we have a color and I want to inspect this color. What we see here is a contrast ratio and it is 12. Let's open this part. So here we have AA3 and green checkbox and AAA 4.5 and green checkbox. And basically we have these curves on the screen and depending on where our color is, it will show you how good your contrast is for reading. Essentially, if I'm taking a color like this, you can see it is unreadable on the screen because it is whitish on the white and now here it highlights for us that the contrast is bad. When we are going here under this curve, obviously it is easier to read because our color is darker. So you can use this tool to make sure that colors are easy to read. And it is better when you have green checkboxes for both cases here. And while we're on the colors topic, let's talk about dark theme. 
For some reason people think that dark theme is plain black. It is not correct. Again, you must make it comfortable for eyes of people to look on your website, especially when they don't have proper light in their room. But what about visibility deficiencies? Even when people don't have problems which require using of screen reader, they still can have, for example, blurry vision. How we can test that? Inside Chrome DevTools, we can click here on these three dots, More Tools, and here we want to select Rendering. We see this tab with a lot of checkboxes, let's scroll to the bottom, and here we have Emulate Vision Deficiencies. And we can select here different problems, like for example Blurred Vision, and then we can check our website again. This is exactly what I said about easiness to navigate. Just imagine that you are a person with such eyesight. It must be easy for you to understand where to click on the website to at least see some stuff. If it is complicated to navigate your website, this person will have problems. And additionally here you can test different vision deficiencies to make sure that your website is still usable. Another important point is keyboard navigation. And you are getting this out of the box if you didn't break this functionality. So when I simply start to use a tab on the website, I am jumping through different links. And as you can see here, I am inside post and essentially I am selecting every single section of this post. This is really comfortable for people to navigate even without screen readers. But with screen readers it is even more important and you don't really need to do anything, just not break it. So what breaks this functionality? If you have some custom stuff which is not working, like typical inputs, selects or links, then you need to add special attributes to make it working like a proper form element. If you for example implemented some component which is completely custom and it must work as a form element, you must add there an attribute. And this attribute is called tab index. You can set it to different numbers like minus 1, 0 and any positive number. You must remember to never use any positive numbers. Why is that? Because it will break the correct order of elements on your page. But in some cases you might want minus 1, which will simply disable this element from selection, or 0, which will add this element to the page for selecting in the correct order. One more tool that we can use inside Chrome for checking accessibility is called Lighthouse. So here I opened Lighthouse tab and on the right we can see the category accessibility. So let's select it and analyze the page. As a result we are getting some score for accessibility and most importantly recommendations. Like for example I have an image without alt text and if people are using screen readers the only way for them to understand what is rendered on the screen when you have an image is an alt text. So it makes sense to add for your images some meaningful information. Additionally to that here I am getting that form elements don't have associated labels. It is easier for screen readers to understand what the specific input is about if it has labels. And the last one links don't have a discernible name. And actually this is something that I see really often. When for example there is a post with read more, people simply write in this link read more. It doesn't bring any clarity to the person what will happen when they click on the link. Obviously they can understand it from the content, like for example this read more is after the beginning of the article, but for screen readers it would be extremely difficult. This is why if you want to improve this you can simply add some meaning to your links. And exactly the same you must do in your DOM notes. It is not a great idea to use as a tag for all your DOM notes just a div. We have things like main, section, header, footer, which brings clarity what this is exactly about. If we use div everywhere, it is difficult to understand how content on the page is looking like for screen readers. But how to check accessibility of the specific element? Because essentially this is what we want to do. We want to add some information to the specific tag. We're selecting an element and inside Chrome, here we can click on triangle and select accessibility. We're jumping to this tab accessibility tree. First of all you can put this checkbox to enable the whole access to the tree of accessibility. And I will show you it in a second. After this you see here some computer properties and most importantly area attributes. As you can see we don't have any area attributes and this is an attribute that you want to put additionally as an information for screen readers. 
but it is not always needed because they also can get this information from the name like for example when you specify a title and now let's look on this enable full page accessibility when you hit this checkbox and reload the page you have this icon on the right and by clicking on it, instead of your DOM tree, this is how screen reader will see your page. Here is a main, then heading, and we see some content, then static text inside, and paragraphs. Realistically, it's not bad here, because we have a paragraph, and the text, some links, and so on, but it can be improved a lot. And if you are opening your page, and you can understand everything that happens on this page, from the structure here, it means that your page has really good accessibility. And let's have a look on the example how we can add some meaningful information to our DOM nodes. Let's say we have an input and it's not clear at all what this input is about. The first thing that we can do is put here a placeholder, like for example enter email. This is already something that screen reader can read. But if you want to write something specific to screen reader, you can use here area label and provide here for example an email this is exactly how you can specify information for specific fields and another tag that you might want to use is called area life so basically you have just some container where inside your information can be updated and we're doing it a lot in javascript applications nowadays what you want to do on this div you want to add an area life attribute and here you can set some values what you typically want to say here is polite, it will notify a screen reader that some information was changed inside this DOM node. And the last thing, which is extremely important for all your users, is checking a mobile version of your website. We typically optimize our websites for full screen, but we can select here different devices in Chrome, and on mobile it looks completely different and might be broken. And the most common problem that I saw when people are developing applications, they put their links too close. And you must understand that when you are tapping on your mobile phone, it is different from the click. It is not precise. This is why when you put your links together, people will for sure click on the wrong link and they will be confused and irritated by your website. This is why just some simple margins or padding can help a lot here. As you can see, accessibility is not difficult and it's mostly about just thinking and planning it accordingly, especially with your UX department. But if you are interested to learn web development on a deeper level, I have a lot of advanced courses on my website, which you can all access with a single monthly subscription. So don't forget to check a link in the description box below.